In this video, we're going to show you how to lift your geo tracker so you can go off road better, fit bigger tires, or maybe even mall crawl if that's what you're into. So the priority came. Well, maybe to some people it's a priority, but it is what it is. So I ordered this lift from Amazon, but it's a Moto Fab. Uh, I have one on my other tracker, and it seemed to be good quality. So when you order it, I guess this is what you'll get a priority mail box with. Moto Fab tape. Um, and then underneath, you pull the bubble wrap off, and you have some stuff wrapped up here, which will be unwrapped, right? So, at first glance, since I've I said I bought these before, I thought maybe they'd switched over to like a plastic, um, because the other ones were aluminum. But after looking at them and clanking them around you can actually see that focus maybe get it up in the light that there's a little chip right here but it's actually just aluminum uh, with the coating so I guess Motofab stepped up their game a little bit uh, nonetheless I wouldn't have cared either way but oh, there's a better spot where the, the coatings off of it but anyway when you order one of these kits uh, they'll send you six spacers, and if you're new to trackers, you're going to think, why do I have six? I'm just lifting the front and the back. Well, and why are there two different sizes is another thing you might think. Well, two of the spacers are actually strut spacers. They have three bolts, and we'll go over how to install them when the time comes. Um, and then there's a thinner spacer and a wider spacer. The thinner one I believe they're an inch and a half uh, or for the front because with the independent geometry you actually need a smaller spacer to achieve two inches of lift and then in the rear you get a two inch spacer to actually get an actual two inch lift and then they also send you new bolts uh, for installing your strut spacers with lock nuts and washers and then they send you a nice little corrections mode of uh, um, and how they recommend you do it, nothing on the back. But that's what you should expect to get when you order a kit from Motofab. Okay, so first step is get your tracker out of the zero degree weather. Then, let it melt a little bit. And we're starting with the rear because it's easier and uh, we've already got it torn apart but don't worry, we're going to show you, or I'll tell you exactly how to, how to take it apart. Just take the wheels off. Uh, and when you jack it up, make sure you put your jack stands on the frame because you want your axle to be able to droop. And then, secondly, take your shocks off, um, which will allow the axle to droop far enough to get the spring completely out. A little bit of rust. Um, and that's about all there is to tearing it apart. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, sometimes the only thing you'll have hanging you up is the e-brake cable, which this side's broken, so it comes out fairly easy. Um, but if you had good e-brake cables, every once in a while they'll hang you up and it'll Before actually you rip springs out. It's a good time to clean them up and paint them if you desire. Normally I wouldn't take the time to do that, but uh, my helper decided it was a good idea so if he wanted to run the grinder I decided I'd let him do it clean him up and then I just had some cheap uh, hammered black paint laying around here I figure it's better than rust so good time if you uh, want to do that paint them any kind of color you like normally I wouldn't care to do that but you can do it if you please. Some of you might be thinking now that uh, we're putting a two inch lift on, what are you going to do about shocks? Because, well, you got old ones, they're probably blown out or rusted out, like what I have here, and completely junk. But there's a simple and easy, cheap solution for you um, for this lift. I personally run this shock on the right. It's a 95 Crown Vic shock. I'm sure that there's probably other years that work, but I just give them the generic 95 year. Um, it's. It's pretty good for, I would say, just a normal person. I have one on my woods only tracker. Um, the only complaint I have with them is they don't let the axle droop enough 
Um, but it's not significant. You probably wouldn't notice it, especially if it's something that you just mainly drive on the road. Now, if you're four-wheeling it all the time, you might say I could have a little more down travel. Um, but the up travel is great. I run 31-inch TSLs on it, and uh, they actually stop right before they hit anything. It's, I mean, it's so close it looks like they'd hit, but they don't. So I can't complain about the up travel, but another inch of down travel would probably be good. But uh, they're only $22 a piece. Um, they're not for the police car. They're not for the touring model. They're just the basic 95 Crown Vic shock. So for that price, you can't really complain. Now, when you go to take your old shock off, these bolts actually didn't break. So that's a surprise. But normally they break. I have one here. Um, usually I just take a normal half inch bolt. Uh, I think this one's three inches long and I just replace it. With this you have to draw out your shock mounts just a hair to get it to fit and it actually fits in this bushing a little better. Um, they do have some slop. I just tighten them and I've never really had a problem either using stock ones or the half inch bolt because uh, when you buy the shocks they send you this weird carriage style bolt looking thing. But I've never had a problem. Um, I'm sure you could probably make a some sort of a metal insert spacer for it, but for me they work fine, and I think for 90% of people they'd work fine. So that's what you need to do for shocks. Very cheap, okay, very so easy. So you take your bigger spacer and you slide it up on your I don't know spring runner, whatever you want to call that thing. And I always just tap it up with a rubber mallet to get it to sit flush. I'm sure that driving it would eventually push it up there, but eh, I'd rather have it be settled now than settle while you're driving. So, yeah, just give it a couple taps. And uh, you can have a little bit of gap in it, but just make sure it's up pretty far. Here's the spring installed with the coil spacer. Um, same with the other side. The first side always goes in completely easy. Um, no issues at all. The second side is usually a little trickier and sometimes with these trackers you have to do what you have to do. Um, like right here you can see I have a piece of pipe or aka jack handle with a lug nut so it doesn't screw up <coughs> my stud and then I actually stood on it bringing the axle the whole way down to the ground with a little bit of pressure with the jack on the other side just a hair and then had my helper fish the spring in um, and that seems to be a pretty decent way to do it I wouldn't recommend that way you could use a spring compressor which I've used before but if you don't have it that seems to work here's the other side so now this is what shock. it looks like with the shock installed um, installing it as easy as putting the bolt back in the bottom and Putting the top together with one nut and tightening it down. Um, yeah, back's fairly simple. So moving on, on to, to the, front. the front end here. First thing you obviously want to do is uh, jack up the front end. Uh, you can use the cross member here to jack it off of. And then make sure you put your jack stands under the frame so you can uh, drip out your control arms later. Um, basically, if you don't know how tracker front ends work they're pretty simple you have your strut as your upper control arm basically there's nothing on the bottom other than an a-arm and the ball joint underneath um, but first things I always do when I'm putting a lift on take the hub off where you still have everything connected so you can hold the, the studs or have someone hold the brakes if you have a helper um, so get the hub broken loose, you can take it off. And then also just take your caliper off the bracket, uh, take this clip off, and then you can move the caliper out of the way, swing it out of the way, hang it up. Um, and then from there on, there's two bolts here, one here, one underneath it, uh, that hold the spindle to the strut. And then you have your castle nut for your tie rod end. And then underneath is your ball joint. Take that nut off. Um, and at that point, there's also a snap ring in here and there's a little washer behind the snap ring. 
and at that point then you can remove the whole spindle um, and also another good thing is if you take the nut off the bottom right there for your sway bar that will also help you get more droop to get the spring out um, let's move over here to the other side we've already got it close to coming apart so one thing a lot of people like to use a pickle fork or a ball joint separator I prefer not to use one because they always tear the boots so if you just slam it with a hammer on not on the threaded part because if you hit it here you obviously ruin it but if you just hit the knuckle a few times it'll come right out and like that dropped right out you can do the same thing with your ball joint um, to drop it out like I said just uh so something else to keep in mind if you around. stick a jack underneath the control arm uh, you can easily then put a little bit of pressure on there to get your strut bolt out um, if not it's going to try to droop and it's going to be hard to get the bolt out so just like that your whole spindle, rotor, everything comes right off. And for installing a lift, I usually just leave the CVs in. Um, I mean, you could take them out if you wanted to, but I don't see a, a point in it. So at this point, your spindle's out of your way. Everything's really out of your way. Um, so at this point, then I would come up on top and let me get some light on here. There's three nuts to hold your strut in. If you take them out, your strut will drop out. And then from that point on, uh, usually I just remove the nut on the sway bar like I mentioned earlier. And then you can have uh, someone usually stand on the control arm and you can get the spring out. And just like that, your struts out. Um, just the three bolts on top. Another thing that's honorably mentioned here is you can actually take these top hats off your strut and flip them over instead of using a strut spacer. Um, I think it actually gives you a little bit less, but the kit comes with strut spacers, so I always just run the strut spacers. Now something I also forgot to mention along the way, usually, I can't remember if on a 16 valve the air box is in the way or not, but at least on this 8 valve the air box will be in your way. Um, there's two bolts that hold the air box in, one that bolts in here, and one that bolts in here, and then back here there's just a little uh, rubber tip that slides into there. And then you just take uh, your one hose clamp off, pull the hose off, take the two bolts out, slide everything off and uh, you'll have your air box. There's also a, a little rubber connector here that goes to your snorkel inside your fender. Um, well, I wouldn't call it a snorkel, but that's what I believe the technical name for it is. There's no clamp or anything on it, it just pulls right off. Um, but get that out of your way to access the three bolts. So now with the nut off of your sway bar end link, um, and the jack out from under your control arm. You can see how much it allows it to sag. And uh, you just put one foot on there, pull your spring out, and you're all apart. The teardown is done now. So for the front, the spacer installs the same. You slide it up on there, and then just uh, use your rubber mouth, tap it up over the rubber grommet. Helper could hit it. <laughs> I'm sure eventually it would work its way up, but Can't I like to try to seat everything as well as I can before I put it together. And make sure that you're using the uh, thinner inch and a half strut space or yeah, inch and a half regular spacer for this. Um, instead of the big one, the big one's for the back. And then it's uh, almost the same as taking it off. You just have someone hold your control arm down. Make sure you position the bottom piece of your coil 
in here there's a little notch for it to sit in like that and then uh, you let it up and then you can just bring your jack back under jack it up and uh, hook your sway bar link back up and that will hold it in place here's another quick tip um, I know a lot of you might be thinking now would be the time to remove your sway bar um, I'm gonna say you probably shouldn't unless you're running some sort of a limiting strap the only reason being is I've seen where if you don't have a sway bar on it'll overextend your strut and eventually rip your strut apart and then uh, you'll be kind of stuck in the water there or pull your CVs um, or yeah if you're not running a sway bar with uh, no limiting device at all it'll actually pull your CV out of the back socket if it droops too far um, now maybe if you did a diff drop or something that would eliminate that problem but it would still eventually rip your strut in half um, so for this road vehicle sway bar is good to have even on my offer I want to keep the sway bar on it and rarely do I break CVs and never have I ripped a strut apart but eventually I'm gonna make some limiting straps for it and, and it'll just help it uh, as far as the independence of each wheel I'm not looking for more droop I'm just trying to get the flex a little better in the front so keep that in mind while you're doing this if it's a road vehicle just leave it on if it's off-road leave it on unless you have some sort of a limiting strap or be prepared to break parts at this point to install your strut spacer you need to remove these studs um, I've never had luck with just punching them out like a normal stud so usually I will just cut them off flush with the top of the hat and um, then punch them out for some reason that seems to work but just trying to punch the whole stud out it ends up trying to bend the top hat before they come out so I just use a uh, angle grinder with a cut off wheel cut them pretty flush if they need ground I'll put a grinding wheel on there and then you just take a regular punch punch them out and then you can install your longer bolts with your strut, strut spacers okay so here's what it looks like with all the studs drill or uh, punched out basically you'll grind it off flush this will still be up underneath you punch this little piece out and then the bolts that they send you for the strut spacers actually won't fit in the hole um, so what you do is you just drill them out I used a uh, 21 64th drill bit draw them out to fit and then your struts ready to go and basically all it is is your strut spacer slides right on top of there you just sit it in there sit it up inside and then run your bolts down through the top of the body and everything and put the nuts and washers on it and your struts back in so basically you just put it back together the same way that you tore it apart except with spacers um, now I did mention that I used a 21 64th drill bit uh, which I found out you actually have to drill the holes bigger I only had up to 3 8 bit so I drilled them to 3 8 and then just over them out a little bit because the spacer and the flange bolts on your strut or the bolt holes on your strut flange are a little bit off so you just have to make it line up um, then you bolt it back on you put your strut spacer or your coil spacer in jack, jack it up put your sway bar link back on and then from there on you can put your spindle on your brakes everything goes back together same order came apart Put your hub back on and then you're ready to put the wheels and tires on and try it out so this is about how your geo tracker should sit after the lift is installed um, now keep in mind these tires are just 205 i'm sorry 215 70 15s just little tires uh they're like a 27 inch if you uh do the math but uh you could fit from my experience uh 29s are a good size to run this or 235 75 15s um i'm going to put a set of 39 50 15s on here there shouldn't be a problem uh, and actually my other tracker i run 31 10 50 15s and they barely rubbed a little bit i had to do a little bit of uh fender rolling in the back but the only problem that you will run into after installing this lift kit is you'll have some positive camber in the front end uh, I don't know if you can actually see or not but there is a slight amount of positive camber it may not bother some people but it would bother me and there's a few fixes for this you could slot your strut so that way you can actually push the wheel in uh, the top of the tire 
in more or they actually sell cam bolts i think uh zook off road maybe sells them i think they're like 25 dollars for enough to do the both sides uh, you only install on the tops uh, so just two bolts is all you need but that's the only complaint really with this kit um, I've never had a problem with this kit this is the second one I've installed and for $130 on Amazon shipped to your door you can't complain I made this video because there's not very many videos on YouTube on how to install a tracker lift or even any kind of tracker knowledge at all so if this video helped you at all give it a like consider subscribing to my channel there'll be some more tracker content in the future there's there's some tracker videos on there now as well as off-roading videos um, we plan to make some more how-to videos for trackers i know this wasn't an in-depth video but uh, we tried to give you a basic understanding of how everything works and how easy it is to put one of these lifts on yourself if you have some basic knowledge about mechanics you should be able to do this with basic hand tools at your house um, but check out my channel give it a like uh, comment if you have any ideas for videos in the future for trackers um, or maybe even some jeep stuff i might be able to do some how to's i plan on putting together a few different videos here in the future but i'm always looking to hear some input thanks for watching